What's up, YouTube? We're gonna start this video off by getting a little Ford tractor out, checking everything on it, and then we're gonna hook up the kickers. If any of you Ford tractor gurus has got any idea where anybody could order good shifter boots, um, let me know. Some people had said Dennis Carpenter, uh, but we've been buying these little El Cheapos from our little local farm store, and they're not holding up worth anything. They don't even really go over over this spot wherever they're supposed to. So. Let me know if you guys have any tips. Oh, reliable. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and put fuel in it first. I went ahead and put my draw bar on. I had to take my draw bar out for when I was cultivating the garden because my cultivators wouldn't clear the draw bar the best. So I took it out, but I went ahead and put it back in. So now we're gonna go get our funnel with our screen and we're gonna put some fuel in it and then we'll hook up to our kicker. If you've seen my other videos of me kicking hay, you know this is my set of coon four basket fold behind tedders. The last couple times that I've used these tedders, I've used the 4000 on them. But you know what I used a little tractor the other day whenever I, uh, whenever I kicked what I mowed in the previous video. And it seemed to handle them really good. So we're gonna try to use the little tractor again today. All right, I'm gonna show you something else that's really important with tedders. There's a lot of wobble and a lot of flop in between this draw bar. So what we do, we're gonna take this clevis and we're just gonna kind of jam it up in there to actually fill up that space. So that way the tater just doesn't sit there and flop up and down. So the tater actually stays where it's supposed to be. So by the time we get done, the pin should go through this hole, uh, kind of something like this, just like so. Now where these taters sit in a barn for a little while, the little push pin that locks and unlocks PTO wants to get stuck sometimes. A real easy way to fix that is get you a hammer and a real thin nail. I don't know if you can see it right there and some WD. And there's a hole on the back side of this that you can put that nail in and just barely tap it and it should get that uh, push plunger working back and forth. So we got that popped back out and it locked, sprayed it with some WD. So now let's go fold them out. to adjust the height it's this little thing right here now you want your taters low enough that it picks up the hay but you don't want them so low they're digging in the ground all right third gear we're going to turn our pto on give her a little fuel may help if i take the brake off There we go. Pretty high. video 
I mowed that up there pretty high. I want to kind of try to do an experiment. Seems like uh, in past years, July's been really dry, and that's the reason why I kind of mowed that a little heavier or a little taller. Uh, but this July seems like it's been pretty wet, so I actually mowed this just a little bit lower than that over there, and I'm gonna really see if there's any difference in it, so. Which I'd say, honestly, I probably left three or four inches on this. Maybe a little closer to three. So uh, if it gets some rain on it, it should take right back off, no problem. And plus, this is creek bottom. Uh, it's a kind of a love-hate relationship with creek bottoms. During the springtime, they're wet, but during the summertime, they're about the only thing that grows really good hay, at least in this area. fescue in this and there is a little bit of orchard grass too but during this time of year a lot of the warm season grasses come out and if you guys don't know the difference fescue orchard grass timothy stuff like that is a cool season grass they do good under 80 degrees so anywhere from like 60 to 80 degrees they grow really well if it gets above 80 and it stays above 80 like tennessee in july and august and it doesn't get much rain or we don't get much rain fescue and orchard grass kind of get stunted i don't really know how some of these guys sell pure orchard grass in tennessee with the area that we live in and to actually have a good crop seems like i seems like my stuff gets stunted whenever it starts getting warm out so uh, what happens is is you have grasses like dallas grass and crabgrass and bermuda um, sometimes foxtail if you have foxtail problems sometimes they come up as well um, foxtail, of course, is not desirable, and uh, Dallas grass is only desirable in certain situations. Crabgrass and Bermuda can be pretty desirable, but if you've got a little bit of fescue and a little bit of orchard to mix in with it, it actually makes pretty good hay, and you guys can kind of look at that and use your own judgment. There may be a little bit of bluegrass in there. A lot of this is, you know, native grasses. I want to see if you guys want to play a game just on this little field right here it's about probably two and a half acres i did mow some down on the creek and i mowed some of the uh i mowed some of the little triangular fields that i have that split up by ditches but just this little piece right here about two and a half acres just judging off the thickness of it why don't you guys drop a uh, drop a comment and see what you think of how many bales it'll make about 40 45 pound bales and uh, I'll reveal it tomorrow whenever I upload the video, whenever I bail this. So, just kind of what you can see in the video right there. I'm not really sure myself. I'd like to at least see 250 out of it. But uh, we'll just have to see.
right, we've made it to these two little places. There's a little swag out here that I try to mow. There's ditches on each side, and it's actually fairly dry here. There's a little triangle thing right there that we'll kick, and then there used to be a fence that run right through here that kind of split this up into two. But me and my cousin took that out the other day, so eventually we're just gonna make this one big field matched with this strip here. But we're gonna kick this, we're gonna kick that, and then we're gonna kick that when I mowed down on the creek. I guess to some people, these little patches can be aggravating. And I'd be lying, I guess, if I said they wouldn't, because they kind of are. When you got some smaller equipment, it's not bad to get them in and out. When you've got a place, you just kind of work with what you got. seem to be my biggest problem, which I mean, I've got to have them or the whole field would be soaked. Um, but it's real hard to get in there and keep them clean because they stay wet pretty much about all year. My cousin said we ought to just dig his pond and put some shade trees around it and have a spot to fish. And honestly, he may be about right because they're pretty much useless about right now and a pond would catch the water, so... Pretty good looking hay in here too. Be surprised at how much the sun zaps out hay, the moisture out of it. It's supposed to be like 95 or 96 today and close to 100 tomorrow, so I just had to take the chance and mow some hay. All right, on to the trying. Now in first cutting, it really does matter which direction you kick your hay. In first cutting, you always need to kick it with the way you mowed it because it helps stand up the hay like this. But in second cutting or third cutting, as long as you just get it thrown out, that's really all that matters. Not really sure what type of grass that is. I don't know if it's some type of Indian grass kind of zoom in on it there for you all. But I'm telling you, that stuff is thick as the dickens in this ditch over here. We got this field on the creek. Tedded, we got the little triangle thing tedded. We got that strip up there tedded and got that big field. Earlier in the video, whenever I ask you all to make a guess on how much uh, how much hay it'll put off or how many bales, I'm just talking about this right here. There at my finger, it goes down to there, back up to the fence, and then back around. So uh, go ahead and, like I said, drop your comment below about how many you think it'll make, about 40, 45 pound bales. We've uh, parked it back here in the yard and may end up having to kick it one more time, I'm not sure. I'll just leave it all hooked up in case I do in the morning. A lot of people always ask the question, how do you make money farming? Well, it's it's really tough. Either number one, you've got to have a massive operation, thousands of acres, hundreds of head of cattle, or number two, you use old equipment. If I went out here and bought a thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollar tractor to try to do what I'm doing here, I would never come out on it. Uh, that's the whole goal of farming is, you know, you may like it, but you've got to at least make a little bit of money on it. That's like these little Ford tractors right here. You can go out here and buy these little tractors anywhere from two to $4,000. And everything I've done only probably used about two gallons worth of gas, in which in my area, gas is right at $4 a gallon now. Three ninety four dollars $4. So I've done everything on $8 worth of fuel. Um, even though it's they're a very kind of basic tractor, no power steering, no live PTO, no anything like that. For the jobs that I do with it, it's perfect. You know, like this, or raking hay, or plowing the garden. Things like, you know, a smaller tractor suited for. But that's the key, guys. You can't go out here and you can't spend thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 on a tractor and only have 15, 20 acres worth of hay. This stuff doesn't work. Now, if you make good money at your job and you just like farming and, and you've got some extra money you want to spend on it, that'd be okay too. But that's the reason why we farm with stuff like this, like the David Brown, like this tractor, the 4000 it's hard to dump money into fancy equipment when your return's just not there. And some good examples of this is Just a Few Acres Farm with Pete. I'm going to give him a shout out and Guy Rock Farms. 
go ahead and check out both those guys. They're really awesome channels, but if you look, they're using the same philosophies. They're using older equipment. I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. Stay tuned. We're going to have a raking and bailing video tomorrow, Lord willing. I think it'll do. It'd probably even do this evening if it was in a pinch, but I'm going to sit and let it wait till tomorrow. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Stay tuned for more.